Do you want to know what gymniosperm plants are? In this The Daily Eagle video, we're going to give you its definition, explain its characteristics, and its reproduction. We'll also give you some examples and detail what differentiates them from angiosperm plants. Let's get started! What are gymnosperm plants? Gymnosperm plants are vascular plants and spermatophytes. But what does this mean? Well, they are produced from a seed and they also generate seeds. The Greek word gymno means naked, while sperma means seed. Therefore, its name indicates that its seeds are naked and do not develop in a closed ovary as fruit would. These plants tend to develop in all areas of the world, but with that being said, they are mostly common in cold and arctic climates. Characteristics of gymnosperm plants They are really old, since they date back to the end of the Carboniferous period. They have vascular tissues that allow them to distribute water and other resources from their roots to their leaves. They produce a seed that does not develop in an ovary. They are woody plants with an arboreal appearance and they have stems, leaves, roots, and seeds. They are generally plants without flowers or fruits. And they can form cones that generate fertile leaves. Examples of gymnosperm plants. There are 88 genera of gymnosperm plants, among which there are more than 1,000 different species. Some examples are the following. Pinophytas, also known as conifers, are the most important group of gymnosperms that includes around 600 species of woody plants. They are evergreen and have deciduous leaves, generally needle-shaped such as pines. Cycadophytas, also known as cycads. These are plants similar to palm trees that grow in regions with tropical and subtropical climate. Ginkophytas, which includes several extinct species and one that is still living. That's the ginkgo biloba, a deciduous tree that is characterized by its fan-shaped leaves. And nettophytes. These plants have short stems and long scaly leaves that form vines or small shrubs. Also, did you know that the largest tree in the world is a redwood, which belongs to the group of gymnosperms? Before we continue, let's put you to the test. How tall do you think this tree is? 95 meters tall? 105 meters tall or 115 meters tall? The correct answer is C. The tallest tree in the world, called Hyperion, is exactly 115.55 meters tall, which is 179.1 feet tall. Isn't that incredible? How do they reproduce? The female cones contain a scale with two ovules while the smaller male cones are formed by one scale and two pollen sacs that form pollen grains. Both the pollen grains and the ovules are called gametes because they're the reproductive cells. Reproduction begins when the wind carries the pollen grains to the female flowers, and the pollen tube penetrates to the ovule so that the gametes fuse together and give rise to the zygotes. After fertilization, the seed is formed and the female inflorescence transforms into a cone. After a while, this cone opens and releases the seeds that will form new plants when they fall on the ground. Together, both the pollination and the fertilization are a slow progress that can take even more than a year. In addition, the maturation of the seeds can take up to three years. Differences between gymnosperms and angiosperms As mentioned before, gymnosperm bear seeds while the seeds of angiosperms are covered by a fruit. Gymnosperms are usually perennial plants, while angiosperms are usually seasonal. While gymnosperms have cones, angiosperms typically have flowers. Unlike gymnosperm leaves, which are usually pointy and needle-shaped, angiosperms' leaves are usually flat. In addition, gymnosperm plants are usually woody, while angiosperms are usually herbaceous. Some examples of angiosperm plants are orange trees, sunflowers, lilies, and birch trees. Let us know in the comments below if you would like us to also make a video about angiosperm plants. And we'll see you in the next video.